am not a conspiracy theorist. What that tends to mean is that I just do not in any way like condone or participate or what do you call that? I don't want to say digest. I don't intake. I don't I don't listen to conspiracy theory stuff. That generally means that I completely dismiss it as garbage. So I, that's generally I never have an opinion. I had a couple of friends that have very strong opinions, and I would listen to them sometimes. Generally speaking, though, I, I put my little rhino horn on where I just try to cut through whatever the hell they're trying to talk about, because I was trying to help a friend for a while who was very into just bizarre. And it would just be a few hours talking, but every now and then it would just be like, aliens and you should go poop no anyway why what why aren't you paying your bills like um i'm a deeply spiritual person i demonstrated a whole bunch of ritual stuff like i'm willing to testify because i know Five books by Lon Milo Duquette that tell you how to do everything I showed except from a Thelemic point of view and I did it in, in a Christian orientation like Paul Foster Case would have done. I know those names. Like I, I literally could bring up about 20 different authors to validate everything that I demonstrated. And then at the end of it I said, by the way, I was only showing you that all of it was stupid. Sort of. Like unless you're doing it in the lodge room, it doesn't really matter. Because I, I know what all of those ceremonies are, and I know that William Westcott, McGregor Mathers, and the third guy that they always forget the name were just Freemasons who added something after the lodge meeting was done, and they pointed at the symbols on the wall and said, by the pentagram. Because if you go to European lodges, there might be a five-pointed star to represent, like, five offices inside the lodge. Like, it had nothing to do with anything that people think it has to do with. So, like, I, I used to do vaguely an LBRP and be like, forward, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, though, I would rather just pray and then cross myself because I don't need to do all that stuff, and I'm not in a lodge room. Instead, I'm in my house. I'm either on deck in my... Uh, at the vault, or I was praying outside the very first day. I said, I'm going to make a strong commitment and just pray in the sun because I wasn't going outside except to do that. Um, generally speaking, though, as someone who can glow in the dark and do weird things, I still don't uh, parallel dimensions. And, and no, I don't do any of that. And usually if anyone tries to steer me that way, I just try to I go into the headwind. Don't follow. Go into the headwind. So it's usually it's like I'll, I'll go down like 20 minutes and they'll say it's like ancient aliens. I make that joke all the time. But for me, ancient aliens is awesome because ancient aliens usually tries to give you as much cryptic history as possible for you to have your own opinion. And then they make it gobbledygook at the end. And that's what the joke is. It's like watching Mystery Science Theater 3000 for me, but with history credit. Because they're bringing up literature from a thousand years. But at the end they have to say like, oh yeah, it goes into space. It's not the same as saying, um, tell me you, tell me what's going on. Now, why don't you pray to aliens? That's when you just go, those aren't real. Um, I, well, they might be, but they're not right now. <laughs> Can or I'm gonna leave. <laughs> Honestly, is that... that's how I haven't been cornered in any weird conversation in like 25 years. Is because every time anyone ever tries to corner me into one of those gobbledygook conversations, I usually just go, "No," or I'm leaving. And I have. I've been at a house party before where I had to Uber because I was drinking, and I'm like, "Okay." I thought this was going to be cool. And then I Ubered my way out because I was like, I'm not going to stay here. This is fucking stupid. Sorry. I swore. And I also think I just lied because Uber didn't exist. I called a cab.
because those were real back then. I called a cab with with like a cell phone for to go like eight blocks away to my apartment in North Dakota because I was like, I'm not doing this because somebody had cornered me into a stupid conversation when they thought I was drunk and couldn't leave. <laughs> so I was like, I, I, I only went out with you guys because you wanted to hang out. And then you cornered me into something really I didn't appreciate. So I called a cab. <laughs> and I left everyone who thought that they were my friends. And I never went out with them again. That, that's discernment. I'm like, I was willing to get drunk one time with you. I didn't even want to get drunk in the first place. I don't really like getting drunk. And I wasn't really that drunk. I was barely over the limit and I still called a cab. But either way, you waited until I had three drinks. And then you made it very, very uncomfortable. We're not friends. So, like, that's how I deal with stuff like that. So, it's it's very hard to have an opinion because I just don't acknowledge their existence. Because it's usually just dumb. <laughs> Sorry. All right. <laughs> Bye.